to our template file here. I'm gonna put a video right here so you can see kind of like how you would put a video in. And then I'm also gonna put Facebook like and Twitter buttons on here. And then we might even put pictures just so you can see how to add pictures anywhere. Um, all right, so let's open up Komodo Edit. Uh, we finished our 404 and 500 page, that's good. And now for our sign up page, which is our main uh, home page, if you will, uh, we're gonna go in here and where the container is, we're gonna do two new ones. So we'll do add div class of column small six, and we're gonna put that around all the marketing information, uh, or at least the Jumbotron information. And then we, let's look at it in our local file here. So now it's pulled over here. Now we can use this area for our video. So going into YouTube, I, uh, I'm gonna grab the Coding for Entrepreneurs video, uh, click on share and then embed. And we're gonna have uh, the suggested height that it comes with, copy that. And then back in Komodo Edit, we're gonna make a new div tag here in the same class as the one before. So column small six, and then paste that video in there. Make sure, of course, you're closing everything that you open, save it. Let's go back in MVP landing, our local file. Now we have that video showing up. Cool, so that's looking kinda nice. Um, if we want, we should probably change this text to white um, or like a gray color. Let's just kind of see what that would look like if we go to inspect element. Um, let's click on our Jumbotron and then go underneath our background color and just change color to gray. Uh, that does not look great, so let's try white. Uh, FFF is the symbol for white. excuse me, FFF is this hex value for white. Um, that probably looks a little bit better. It's easier to read than the black. So let's just copy that and then go into Komodo Edit, go to our static files under custom where we have our Jumbotron here. Let's paste in that color of white. All right, cool. So that looks pretty good. And then the last thing we wanna do is add a Facebook like button or I should say the next thing um, so there's a couple ways we could do it. We could just grab the URL we want to use, so programmingforentrepreneurs.com, and go to this site. Uh, uh, f another way to find this is just search Facebook like button, and it's likely that the developer one will come up. Um, so again, we're doing a like button. So down here, it's going to say what URL you want to like. So you can just paste in the URL, um, and then we're going to take off show friends faces. We're going to uh, I'm going to include the share button so they can just click it to share with their friends. And I'm going to change it to button count. Uh, right now, nobody likes programmingforentrepreneurs.com. Uh, that's okay. Um, maybe one of you will like it. Anyways, um, yours will probably say the same if you're definitely launching it, and that's okay. You, you need to start somewhere, so go ahead and do that. Um, when you go to hit, go to hit, when you're ready to place it in, so just hit get code. First off, we're gonna grab this bottom, uh, this top part. We're gonna grab this, it's our uh, JavaScript and we're gonna put it in our base file. So base.html, scroll all the way down, put it right above all the other JavaScript, save that. And then let's go back and then grab this one, uh, copy that information. And that's, we're gonna put that where we want the like button to show up. So back into our signup page, we are gonna put it in right before the pre-order. So we'll change this heading to social and then we'll put the like button right here. So let's get rid of all this other text. And I deleted a paragraph tag there. So I'm gonna close that off, save it. Now let's go back into MVP landing, do a refresh and there's our like button. It takes a moment to load up, um, that's pretty standard. We can get rid of that button too, um, because we probably don't need that anymore. So let's just go down one and delete that. All right, so if we do a refresh, we have our social like button there, and we could do the same thing 
with a tweet button. So about.twitter.com slash resources slash buttons. Um, I'm going to do tweet instead of follow. Of course, you can use the same process that we're going to do for follow and change it to tweet and use the page URL. So this is kind of nice. Um, it will use any page that it's on. So like if you have multiple pages and you want them to tweet that specific page, that will be good. Otherwise, we can just declare um, the page that we want to use, which we did before was codingforentrepreneurs.com. So go ahead and paste that in there. And you can use the title, you can put whatever it is that you want it to be coming from. And then this code right here, you just copy that code. Um, let's go back in here, make a new paragraph tag, press enter, uh, paste it. Now you'll notice that there's all this script stuff. Um, that's okay, we can leave that right there. Or we can put it just like what we did with the Facebook one because we don't actually need to have the Twitter script running every single time we have it um, on our site. We can just put it in the base file as well. So underneath the Facebook one, just put it there. And we already have the tweet button there, so let's do a refresh and you'll see tweets there and then the Facebook like buttons there as well. Um, you can follow the same process uh, for, Boots, uh, for uh, Google Plus or Pinterest and it's really easy to do as you see you just kind of put in a URL and then paste it it's not really that complicated okay so the last one we're gonna put a image in this heading uh, one of these so I'm gonna actually jump over to codingforentrepreneurs.com and I'm gonna grab one of these images so if I scroll down I'm gonna grab this made for leapers one I'm gonna, first I'm gonna show you how to copy an image URL so from somebody else's website so if you copy the image URL and you paste it up here, uh, that's a direct link to that image. Um, this is, as you see, our static, it's static files being served. So go ahead and copy that link and then back into Komodo Edit, back into our signup. Uh, we're gonna get rid of this text here. Um, just get rid of it. And we're gonna put an image here. So it's image source equals to and then whatever the link for the image is. Um, so that's showing us that it's grabbing the image from whatever this URL is, and then it's gonna be in this little container. So let's save that and do a refresh on our local file, and we'll see a little error. Um, this happens because the image is actually bigger than the container that it's in, so we need it to be responsive, and that's actually pretty easy to do. We just make it a class, of image responsive so img responsive and then if we refresh it uh, it becomes responsive so it'll change with the size of that um, just like the grid that we've seen before so see it changes right there um, that of course is a twitter bootstrap thing it's not just a any website thing uh, the image class that is so um, that's putting an image on from another website now if we wanted it on our own Let's save this image and we're going to put it into our static files. So into static, static, and then we were going to make a new folder called image and save that. All right, so it should download and save to your folder there. And what we can do here is you can do static, static, URL and then image and then the name of it was leap underscore blue dot PNG that's the name of the actual image that I saved um, see right here alright so then now that I have a this is a local version of it then it's not pulling from any other website it's pulling from our own static website we save it and do a refresh and it's still there it's the exact same picture so that's how you would do it if you were using your own local one. This is actually recommended to use your own local, uh, mainly because you don't want to run the risk of using somebody else's picture and their website goes down and then you lose pictures. You wanna have it where it's using on your server. Um, unless it's on something kind of substantial, like if it was on uh, an Amazon server or something like that, good chance that it won't go down. But I mean, to be safe, you wanna put it on your own server. All right, cool. So 
this is it. We've got it done. Um, now all we need to do is just kind of upload these changes and you should already know how to do it. Um, I'll do it real quick here. Um, so we go into first and foremost, we want to go into static and we made a few changes to static. All we did was we added uh, the image folder. So go ahead and drag that in. And you could even drag in the full CSS folder. It's not necessary. You could just drag in the custom, but we only changed that one thing. So you don't have to drag the whole folder in, but I'm going to do it anyway, just because that's, I know that's all I changed. Okay, so that's our CSS is covered. Now back into our um, templates folder, we changed the base file as well as the signup file. So those are the only two things that we need to actually upload here. So in templates, let's grab base and sign up, load these things over, continue. All right, so if we refresh on MVP landing on codingforentrepreneurs.com, uh, a few things will take place where they changed, but you notice the color is not here as well as the image, and that's because we didn't collect the static files. So go back into here, into our terminal, open up your connection to Web Factional, and go into your web apps, into MVP landing and source. Oops, we need to change directory into MVP landing slash source list out make sure we're in man or manage.py is then python 2.7 manage.py collect static you want to override it yes and if you notice it changes everything that we just recently uploaded um if we only uploaded custom and leap it would you know show that those just those two changes uh, but you do notice that we didn't have to do collect static for our template files it's only for JavaScript, images, and um, CSS. So just keep that in mind. All right, and last but not least, we wanna restart the server just to make sure that our changes went through. All right, there we go, and now it restarted. If we do a refresh, now we have our white text, our image, our social, everything is there, it's working. Congratulations, guys. I know this was a lot to go through. In the next one, I'm just gonna kind of summarize everything that you've learned and how all this stuff works together. So um, awesome work, see you in the next one.